Come on and sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Sing hallelujah. Lift your hands and sing that with us. Sing, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah! You're worthy to. Come on, let's lift our hands. I lift my hands. Lord, I praise you this morning. I bow my head. I lift my hands. I lift my hands. I praise you, Lord. I bow my head. I honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be Come on, is that why you're here this morning? We're here to lift them up. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Sing hallelujah. Come on, with lifted hands we sing. I lift my hands. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I bow my head. I bow my head. I, I honor you, Lord. I lift my hands and sing. I lift my hands. I praise you, Lord. I bow my head. I bow my head. I honor you, Lord. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, you're worthy to be praised. Come on, hallelujah. Is that why you're here this morning? Come on, lift your hands. Hallelujah, we praise your name. We praise your name. Hallelujah, so worthy. Hallelujah, Lord. We lift you up, Lord. We praise your name. Hallelujah, we praise your name. Hallelujah. This morning, God, hallelujah, we praise you, Jesus. Sing, hallelujah, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, you're worthy. You are so worthy. One last time, sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, clap your hands unto the Lord and give him praise this morning. Hallelujah, we praise you, Jesus.
Amen, amen. We thank you so much for being here this morning. We thank you all of you that are joining us by ways of webcast. Thank you so much for logging in this morning. Our pastor is preaching down at our Jackson campus. He will be here at our 1 o'clock service. Excited about what God's going to do at 1 o'clock, but I'm also excited about what God's going to do here this morning. I wonder if you could step out of your seat, go shake someone's hand, greet each other in the name of the Lord, tell them how glad you are to see them today. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you again so much for being here this morning. We're going to ask our ushers to come as we prepare to receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. It is a privilege to give unto the Lord, and everyone said amen. Amen.
appreciate our, our young man helping out um, during our helping out with offering. They're excited to do it, and so we're excited to let them. I think we should always give opportunity for young people to serve. Amen? Amen. So we're excited for them. Our theme, our theme scripture says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Luke 6.38. And everyone knows this to be true. Everyone said amen. Amen. Let's just pray for this offering. Lord, we love you and we're thankful for the opportunity to give into your kingdom. Lord, we ask that you would touch the gift and the giver. Bless those that have it and those that do not. Bless them for their desire. In Jesus' name, we'll praise you and we'll thank you. Amen. God bless you as the ushers serve you. good looking. Amen. Amen. We want to go to the Lord together in prayer. We want to pray for Ernest Mueller family. Uh, Mr. Mueller passed away. This is our daughter-in-law's grandfather, and this is a sent in by brother and sister Fox. So we want to pray that God would comfort them in their time of loss. Also want to pray for Carol Washington called in, has bronchitis, so I want to pray that God would touch Carol Washington. Also want to pray for Sister Gail Chandler. Uh, we had our family Christmas last night, and she is coming down with whatever is going around. If you have not gotten it, you are blessed. And so we want to pray that God would touch Sister Chandler. Also, we want to continue to pray for Sister Patterson. God is touching her. He is not finished with the work that he's doing and with her. And so we want to pray that God would touch her as well. And everyone said amen. Amen. If you have a special unspoken request, you can signify it by the uplifting of your hands. God knows what they are. I'm going to ask you if you could stand all across the building, if you're able. And uh, if you have a special need and you would like the ministry to pray for you, please come. And we'll be more than glad to do that. Let's just take all these needs before the Lord, shall we? Heavenly Father, we love you and we're thankful for this day. And we're thankful for all your many blessings. We're thankful for the opportunity to be here once again. God, we ask that you would move upon them, God. I ask that you would move upon every situation, every circumstance, God. You know the work that needs to be done in each situation. God, we ask that you would touch those that are sick. Let your healing virtue flow through their bodies. We know it's by your stripes that we are healed, and we claim it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would continue to touch Sister Patterson. We're thankful for what you've done for her thus far. God, we ask that you would just bless her. Lord, we ask that you would touch the Mueller family, God. We ask that you would comfort them in their time of loss. Touch Sister Gail, Carol Washington, God. Let your healing virtue flow. We will not fail to give you honor and glory and power and praise. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Continue to stand and worship as they sing.
lift your hands as they sing. We're going to sing it one more time. Will you just sing it with hands out raised? Make this your presence, your prayer today, God. Sing in your presence, Lord. Clap your hands unto the Lord and give Him praise this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We magnify your name. I'm so thankful that you give us peace that passes understanding. Amen, amen. Thank you so much again for being here. We're going to go ahead and dismiss our all-stars. I apologize for my voice. Sometimes the Lord is going to help us through it said amen. If you have your Bibles, I'd like to turn your attention today to Genesis, Genesis chapter 50. The Holy Ghost is here today. I can feel it moving so strongly this morning and I'm, I'm thankful for the presence of the Lord that's here and everyone said amen. Genesis chapter 50, verses 18 through 20. And the word of the Lord says, And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. For the next few moments, I want to preach to you for them from this simple thought, the opportunity of adversity. God is just moving in this place. I, I just feel his presence so strong. I wonder if we could just raise our hands. We just ask God to touch us, to speak to us through this, through this sermon, maybe to speak to our hearts and minds today. Lord, we love you and we're thankful for this day and we're thankful for all your blessings, God. We ask that you would touch in a mighty way, God. Have your way in the remainder of this service. We know that your presence is already here. Continue to move and touch. In Jesus' name, we'll praise you and we'll thank you. Amen and amen. God bless you. (coughs) You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Can you believe that 2016 is almost over? Some people are saying, thank you, Jesus. I know it seems to be that this year has seen the church go through many, many things, just the people of God going through many things. I have, in 40 years of my life, I have never seen a year in which adversity has come so strongly against the people of God. I've seen people go through financial situations. I've seen people go through health situations. We've seen people go through marital problems and you see people, churches closing their doors because of situations that may arise. This year has seemed to be a lot of adversity that has come against the people of God. And I'm not here to be negative. I'm just stating what is factual. 
Adversity has come to many people even here this morning. People that might be watching online. People that might be here at our 1 o'clock service. We have seen adversity come against so many people and the people of God. It seems to be just precedent throughout the, the movement of God's people. But I am here today that even though adversity may be here or you may be going through something in your life or you have seen adversity throughout this year, I am here today to tell you also that I have never seen a greater opportunity in which God wants to move amongst his people. I have never seen a greater opportunity to do something great for the kingdom of God. And even though adversity may be here, opportunity abounds from young to old to middle age to elderly, from man and woman, boy and girl, opportunity abounds in the face of adversity. I am so thankful that God has seen fit to allow adversity to come to us, but in that time of adversity has given us opportunity to flourish in the face of that adversity. You see, adversity carries a mingled seed. I'm not much of a, of a yard person. You could just ask Brother Deacon right here. He knows that to be true. And we have some bare patches in our grass or in our, in our lawn and no doubt, if I wanted grass to be sown, that Brother Deacon would throw out different types of seed to see what kind of seed catches in order for grass to grow. But it seems that adversity carries a mingled seed or a mixed seed, so to speak. It has produced, or it can produce destruction because the adversity of Cain drove him to murder. The adversity of Saul drove him to a witch. The adversity of Judas drove him to betrayal. The adversity of Ananias and Sapphira drove them to lie to the man of God and to the Holy Ghost, which ultimately led to their death. However, like I said, adversity carries a mingled seed. And although it may produce de destruction, it can also produce opportunity. Because adversity... <coughs> Excuse me. Adversity which brought the flood also brought and produced a Noah. While adversity of pagans of the Ur of Chaldees, while the adversity of these pagans, the product of this was a man called Abraham. The Ur, excuse me, the adversity of Samson's capture and mutilation gave opportunity to destroy the temple of Dagon and the enemies of God. The adversity of Goliath gave opportunity for the, for the resurgence of a man called David. And it is so that adversity carries the seed of destruction, but yet it also carries the deceit or the seed of opportunity. And the story of Joseph of our text, no doubt if many of you, if not all of you, know this, this story. And you can see throughout Joseph's life, time after time, adversity came to his life. From, from the time that he had a dream and he shared the dream with his brothers and with his family, adversity began to come his way. The adversity of betrayal in Joseph's life gave opportunity for him to go to Egypt. The adversity of an Egyptian household gave way to an opportunity for him to go to prison. The adversity of prison gave way to opportunity to make it to a king's court. And in a king's court, the adversity of famine gave way to opportunity for the revelation of who he was to his brethren. And then gave breath and life to the dream that Joseph had many years ago. So while we may want to yell at adversity in my we might want to curse the adversity that has come to us maybe this year or that we might find ourselves facing even today. We need to be careful not to face and to curse the adversity because it might be giving way to opportunity for you to do something miraculous in the kingdom of God. Every time adversity knocked Joseph down, opportunity helped him stand back up. A lot of times we fear adversity coming our way. I know I do, just being honest. I don't like it when adversity comes my way. But I do know that it will come at some point in my life. 
I tell our young people many times, I wish it were so, Dr. Harper, that everything was just roses and hunky-dory once I started serving the Lord. But that's just not the case because we, we have this thing that we're involved in called life. We must not fear adversity, but we need to receive her as a friend. And she, for she brings with her an opportunity. Micah 7 and 8, if you could put that up there for me, Brother Reeves, I appreciate it. One of my favorite scriptures, it says, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. It doesn't say if I fall. It says when I fall. When I go through a, a hard time in my life, when I get knocked down, that's not, the most, that's not the final scene of my life. The final scene of our life should be when I fall. Yeah, I'm going to fall. Yeah, I'm going to go through times of my life where I'm hurting. Yes, I'm going to go through adversity in my life. But when I fall, I shall arise. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I can't tell you how many times I've fallen, and I have fallen, and I have fallen. But that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is to get back up. Yeah. Donnie McClurkin sings a song, and, he, and one of the phrases in, this, in his song, I, I love it. It says, for the difference between a saint and a sinner is the saint got up. Yeah. It's the truth. For a saint is just a sinner who fell down and got up. You ask the boxer, does it, really, does it really matter if he gets knocked down? Not necessarily, because that might be the best thing for him. Because he needs rest. But it does matter if he stays down for the full count. We need to be careful that we don't curse and that we don't restrain and push against the adversity. Sometimes we need to be knocked down for God to help us in a situation. But we need to be sure that we don't stay down for the whole count. We should embrace adversity. Embrace her as a friend. Because for, except for adversity of the Philistines, we never, would never would have known of Shamgar. Except for the adversity of the fiery furnace, we never would have heard of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Except for the adversity of death, we never would have heard of a man called Lazarus. We, we say, God, please don't let this come in my life. And God is what has used these people throughout Scripture and throughout the beginning of time. He's used people. And we've all said, God, please don't let adversity come. And God is saying, if you could just see what's beyond the door of adversity and see it when that door of adversity is open, it is open to a widespread opportunity to do something great for my kingdom and for me. No doubt Jesus in the Garden of the Gethsemane did not want to embrace adversity. But he saw that just beyond the adversity of the cross was salvation in Acts chapter 2. And had it not been for the adversity of 400 silent years when not one prophet spoke and, and the Lord didn't speak to his people, we never would have heard the angel of opportunity as it began to say, And she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Don't you know that in 400 years they wanted to hear from the Lord at some time? And God was preparing the way for him to robe himself in flesh and come to, a, and come to an earth and die on a cross and then be resurrected again that I might have eternal life. In those 400 years he was preparing a way, but yet all we would have seen was the adversity of silence. And then here comes the herald as he says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. If you could put Romans 8 and 31 up there for me, please, Brother Chris. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? We often, we often say that in, their, in our time of, of adversity and in our times of struggles in our life. But if we just really understood what we were saying, if God 
before me. Bank of America has nothing against me. Hello? Preaching to myself here. If God be for me, no matter what sickness comes my way, if God is for me, no sickness shall triumph over me. Because God is greater than any of my sicknesses. God is greater than my financial situations. God is greater than my marital situation. God is greater than all of my problems. You see, the devil, he comes against us in adversity. But in each adversity is given to us opportunity. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted above that that you are able. But will with every temptation also make a way of escape. In adversity, there's an opportunity. In the adversity of sickness, there's an opportunity of healing. In the adversity of trial by fire, there is the opportunity of coming forth as pure gold. In the adversity of financial trauma... There is the, an opportunity of, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. In the adversity of <coughs> a broken home, or in the adversity of a broken spirit, in the adversity of a broken mind or a broken heart, comes the opportunity where Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I am so thankful for the, oppor or for the opportunity that God has given to me in the adversity that he has allowed to come my way. Because it is in my adversity that I have found the true self that I have been looking for. It's in adversity that we really find out who we are. It's in adversity, in adversity is when we find out why we truly love God and why we truly serve the Lord. Do we love him just because he gives us great things? Absolutely. Do we love him because he blesses us every day? Absolutely. But can we still love him when the door is closed in our face and when people tell us no and when things come against us in our life? And things we don't understand. When adversity comes to us, do we love him just the same as when he says yes and when he gives us his bountiful blessings? You see, none of these adversities have power to separate us from God and from the love of Christ. You see, Paul asks in Romans 8, 35 through 37... Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress? Anybody been there this year? In tribulation? Hello? In persecution? Amen? In famine? Anybody ever seem like you had a dry time this year? Hey, I'm just preaching to myself here too. Dr. Harper would probably know this. We find dry times of ministry. In the famine, it seems like we're in a dry time in ministry. And we're in a dry time of our personal life. And we're in a dry time in a famine of our, of our prayer life and in our Bible reading. But is famine going to separate me from the love of Christ? Or nakedness or peril or sword? Can any of this separate us? 36, please. As it is written for thy sake. We are killed all the day long, and we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Wow, that doesn't sound very promising, does it? Nay, in all these things, we are more, more than conquerors, more than conquerors. I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved me. In all these things comes the opportunity comes the opportunity to, for us to be not just conquerors. That's great within itself. That's great within itself. Dr. Harper, he, he quotes the scripture. As a matter of fact, he's got me quoting it when I pray. For my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. For him that is able to do 
exceeding abundantly above all that we shall ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. Isn't that just the way God is? That's just the way the Lord is. He, he, he doesn't let us just become conquerors. He lets us become more than conquerors. I'm more than a conqueror, Brother Dobbins. In my adversity, because God loved me so much and because I love him so much and I serve him, even in adversity, he has allowed me to become more than a conqueror. So if you find yourself maybe this year in a situation that seems so overwhelming, if you find yourself in a situation that you don't understand, you find yourself in adversity, if you'll just look, if you'll just look, you'll find the opportunity that God has prepared for you. Sister McClure, I hope, I, I, hope, I hope you don't mind, but I know you've gone through a situation. I know your family has gone through a situation that hurts, and it's adversity, and it's a door that seems to have been shut in our face. I, I know that pain. I know that situation. But I found, if I may just be, be transparent and use myself, I, I, I'm all I know. But I found when my mom and father passed away, Sister Tasha, we found in the adversity of trauma and hurt and pain, we found the opportunity of peace which passes all understanding. We found a father that loves us beyond what our earthly father could. Beyond what our pain could, could give to us. We found a place in God that we could run into. Just like the scripture says, Dr. Harper, when the enemy cometh in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. When the, when the enemy comes in like a flood, there's a haven that I can run to. And his name is Jesus. In my, in my adversity, Sister McClure and McClure family, in your adversity, you'll find an opportunity that God will give to you that you will love Him and you will come to know Him in a way that you never seen thought possible. Our church has gone through much in these past few months with our, with our First Lady. I know she's going through it, but it's like we we have gone, we're going through it too because we love her so much. But in that, I have found a peace that God has given to me about this situation. Nana, if you're watching, God is going to touch you. And God is going to use this, what, what, just like Joseph said, what you thought was for my detriment. God intended it for my good. And God is going to bring you, bring you out and do greater things in your life than you ever thought possible. As we all stand, Jonah, I've talked with you, many of you about this before, but Jonah could have cursed the fish that God sent his way. But if you ever thought about, if God would not have sent the fish, Jonah would have died. He would have died. They threw him in the ocean. And he had resigned himself to the fact of knowing, I am going to die. Throw me overboard. And peace will come to your boat. But the Bible says that God prepared a great fish. That he sent Jonah's way at just the right time. And it was in the adversity of the seas. That an opportunity of a fish presented himself to Jonah. And when Jonah spent three days, no doubt, stinking. Nobody wanted to do that, I'm sure. But an opportunity presented itself. And because of the adversity of the sea, a whole land was saved. Nineveh was reached and preached the gospel to because of the adversity of the sea, the opportunity of salvation came because of the adversity.
because there's opportunity in our adversity. As we all begin to lift our hands and maybe Sister Patterson begins to sing, if you could find your way to the altar. We, we're, st- we're a little early today and that's fine, but I'm wondering as we open the altars for everybody, if you could come down, can we just lift our hands and can we just begin to thank God? Maybe you find yourself in a time of adversity right now. Begin to thank God and begin to begin to look and God will show you an opportunity. Maybe you have found yourself struggling through this year, but I'm here to tell you that God has given you opportunity in your adversity as we begin to lift our hands and she begins to sing. so much for being here this morning. I know I'm not pastor, but I'm pastor who's doing the work of the Lord in Jackson, and I believe our bishop will be here in our one o'clock service. Please come back for our one o'clock service. We're going to have a wonderful time for our Christmas celebration service. 
going to be some great singing, preaching, and so I'm excited about what God is going to do. Can we just lift our hands and we'll be dismissed with this prayer. Lord, we love you and we're thankful for this day and we're thankful for the opportunity, God, to be here once again. And we're thankful, God, that, God, we're not thankful, God, for all the adversity, God, but we're thankful for the opportunity that you have presented to us in our adversity. God, we ask that you would go with us, keep us safe, bring us back at the appointed time and will not fail to give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. You are dismissed in Jesus' name. Shake hands and be friendly.